Hello again, this is Daniel Ritchie, and I thought it would be a good idea at this time to talk about how compositing was accomplished in the old days uh, before digital, uh, when they had to use a optical printer with film, and uh, I thought it would be useful to help us understand how uh, we can master the art of compositing and have better control over it. So I've created a few stored images here, or stored animations. Uh, so I won't have to go through all the process all over again just to quickly go over the idea. Um, as you can see here, we've done uh, quite a bit of work to eliminate green edges and get this really high level of detail around these, uh, these individual hairs uh, with no weird glows or anything like that happening. Um, we did this just basically having a good understanding of how compositing uh, in the old days work basically uh, without having to rely on uh, necessarily the software to do all the work for us. Um, what I did was take our original green screen footage and uh, let me store a copy of what I had done here to memory and um, go to our original footage. Alright, as you can see we just have a uh, regular green screen plate which is courtesy of let's see this is from uh, Hollywood camera works download I'll remember that eventually and um, if you like you can download this from their website uh, at your leisure to test these um, ideas for yourself so uh, as you can see here uh, we have a pretty good clean looking plate uh, we really want to extract um, a high level of detail out of this though. We have these very fine hairs and everything. So we're going to first want to create a matte image, which is what we have here. It's just basically the black and white, um, what we used to call a key, such as, uh, as in chroma keying, a key or a matte. And we're going to use the um, composite with swap green screen filter and uh, before I do that uh, yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and do that actually alright green screen and I'm gonna set uh, show matte as the uh, the I'm gonna zoom out so we can see this better actually and one more time let's see alright we wanna be able to see what we're doing after all alright so we want to make sure we can really see the hair and everything on there so um, adjusting the low and high values here control how much gets keyed how much doesn't as you can see if we use this uh, part of that face would be transparent and, and it would uh, show some of the some of the background through there we don't want that we want to take that just up enough so nothing is showing through that would be all black and then we want to take the second parameter down or put it all the way up in this case all the way up to where you're not seeing this grain or whatever or where this uh, where the green part is becoming uh, not white we don't want it to be gray we want it to be 100% white with no grain or anything that's visible but in this case we still want these very fine hairs to be visible so we're gonna use the maximum amount of this dynamic range that we have available to us without clip clipping off these fine hairs uh, but also not allowing any grain in there so as soon as we get that just right, um, test the other side looks fine. We can see we have nice individual hairs. I think there might be a few little specks of grain in there. I might take it down just a little bit more. All right, so we've done a good job that uh, there. We're going to click Animate to create that mask. And uh, that's exactly what we had up here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those and store this animation store to memory um, might be useful at some point to have the reverse version of that so I'm gonna go ahead and invert it and apply that to all the frames and store a copy of that store that to memory alright now that we've done that we take our background plate which is just this uh, still image that we have let me undo that because I want to put that in the swap image I'll uh, click on it just to put it in there and then I'll swap back 
so that I don't uh, corrupt our our animation because we want to be have all our frames of our animation as they should be. Now I'm going to go to let's see filter and combine with and use multiply mode. And let's see in this case I actually want to use the reverse of this not the white on black but the black on white so I'm going to go ahead and restore that and just put that uh, background, background image back in there and then go to filter let's see make sure none of these are set to be used as the um, the swap image otherwise that will overwrite what we just put in the swap image make sure that's still okay alright I'm gonna go to combine with swap and multiply and apply that to every frame now in the old days with optical printers they would create up a film um, a, a piece of film that was a mat it would just have this uh, this black and white image they would project it through the optical printer and it, it would hold out they call it a holdout mat <laughs> it would hold out part of the image and let part of it be uh, exposed and part of it not be exposed in this case we exposed the background but we did not ex expose the foreground part that's the part we're going to add in later um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get rid of the old version and store this new version let's see store copy of that and now I'm going to go back to our um, original green screen and if we were to uh, add this to our say you were projecting this through an optical printer and you projected both the uh, the background and this together it would effectively add them or uh, add them together it'd be like a, a multiple exposure you would get something like um, let me see where's our background it's over here you get something like combine additive it would look like that and it would not look right it looked, it looked like you made a mistake with your camera so what we have to do is we have to combine it with this this holdout mat um, but that's not enough because if we just combine that um, this background would still be really green even though the the foreground would look right so we have to create another uh, mat and combine it with this green screen to eliminate the green and that's where this reverse image is going to come in handy I'm going to click where it says use as animated swap image right there I'm going to scrub back and forth a few times to make sure that's gotten into the uh, swap image I'll just click there and yeah you can see it's in there now filter and I'm going to go to combine with and again with the multiply and since this is the reverse image of our original mat it's going to do the opposite of what we did here where we held out the foreground it's going to hold out the background meaning this green is going to disappear so let me go to combine and multiply and as you can see we've not done a very good job of masking out that uh, that green so we might actually want to make a different mat a slightly different mat where we um, eliminate more of the green so let me just undo that I'm gonna just make a black mat here in the background I'm gonna go to filter combine let's see combine with swap and sorry composite with swap green screen go back and into that original mode um, remember we have this green removal and all this stuff in here that we can play with but in this case I want to hold out more of that uh, that hair there I want to eliminate more of that green so I'm gonna go and change that high pass I'm gonna alter this make sure I'm not eliminating anything here let's see I'm gonna do my best to eliminate some of that green off of there though use the artificial green removal um, and basically whatever it takes to get rid of that green let's see I might have to really really <laughs> alter that green in there I might have to actually add some green back into this or not add it but rather multiply it let's see 
just to get her looking a little more natural looking. And as soon as I've got this to where it's just where I need it, let's see. Make just make sure there's no grain in the background there. I'm gonna go ahead and click animate to just create this. Whoops. I think I did something wrong there. Let me undo that. No, nope, can't do undo that. So let me just restore my original. Um, yes, I had this on. I had to turn off by uh, using animated to swap image. I'll go back to the background, make sure it is black, and I'll do that again. Filter, combine, or composite with green screen. Just making sure everything looks right. Click animate and there we go we kept the foreground we eliminated the background and this will be our um, our second plate this one with the the background held out and uh, let's see I'm not gonna use these anymore and I'm gonna close that older one and only keep these handy and now let me store a copy of this. So we're going to do this a little bit different and with computers. The way the computers are, you're used to doing alpha blending. Uh, we're not going to think that way. We're going to think the way we used to do things on film, or well, our uh, our ancestors used to do the way <laughs> the way they used to do things on film, at least. Uh, film is a, an additive process. You you make exposures um, to a negative, then you reverse it, and all this stuff. But uh, with optical printing, you use these other layers of film that that was a holdout mat. You'd actually have you know two or three or, or a bunch of different pieces of film uh, almost making physical contact with each other, uh, and you'd have a, a projector shining a light through them and, and exposing it onto a new piece of film, and uh, they'd sometimes go to really exotic means to project like sometimes uh, dozens or, or more pieces of film before they they had a final exposure or um, uh, I remember in the case of Return of the Jedi they had uh, one shot that had something like 99 different exposures uh, of different TIE fighters and things flying around crazy stuff they used to do but um, just getting the basic ideas down uh, is gonna be very useful so we're gonna go to um, what? Well, what we have here, we want to take and add this to uh, our background that has that holdout mat in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Use as an animated swap image, and that should scrub back and forth to make sure it gets into our swap. That should now be in our swap image. Um, as you see here, we have a foreground that is is right with the black background held out and in this case we have a background with the foreground that's held out all we have to do now is add these together um, in this case I might use uh, the screen mode instead of add mode it'll give a slightly cleaner transition where these um, these highlights on this hair are I'll try it either way and see what happens let me combine with uh, add it first Apply to all frames, yes. And as you can see, we're getting this very clean looking. You can see the very fine details around this hair. If we just did a standard alpha blending, you would probably not get this level of detail. You'd probably get a, uh, more green bleeding through there. You'd probably get uh, a, a distinct uh, green glow to it, more uh, more of a, a hard edge to where the hair is being blended. Um, and this is more like a film. It's more like more natural. It's a little more, um, a little more work. But uh, you really get. I think you get more out of this process. You understand the process better. And I think it's worth worth using. As you can see there, we've got a very good looking um, mat around this, these hairs. And uh, let me see. Let me store a copy of that. And that was additive. Let me try the screen mode and see what happens. So I'll restore that and to make sure this is still on the background. I'll go to filter, combine with screen mode. Okay, in here, in this case, I don't think it made much of a difference. 
depends on how how closely matched your mats are probably and how how you know how much lighting and how much is going on with this uh uh these edges around your mats it's worth exploring in either case not sure it made a big difference in this case but you can see we got a very clean looking mat again uh in some of these previous tests where i just did a, a simple green screen with alpha blending um i did not get this quite this level of detail or this level of uh, sophisticated, sophisticated uh, keying around these hairs. Um, that's hard to say for some reason. And um, so, hope this has been kind of enlightening and um, helpful. Uh, just basically a a fundamental introduction of the way a keying was done on film, basically by holding out one part of an image and exposing another part of an image and exposing different. Uh, different images or different sequences that have been had parts of them held out um, instead of just straight doing an alpha blending so um, that's about it for now hope you enjoyed watching and again keep an eye out for Howler 96 and Tata for now